February is National Career and Technical Education Month, and part of that are Career and Technical Student Organizations, also known as CTSO. I'm here with some Wisconsin FFA state officers, part of the CTSO's National FFA, Skills USA, a lot of organizations that provide real life experiences for students. I have here uh, Heidi Straw and Casey Dank, and they are um, serving this organization and have done a lot so far. So welcome. Thanks for coming on. Yes, yes thanks for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. We're both excited to be here. <laughs> well, Heidi, let's first start from, from with you. You are serving as a state vice president also in this area of Section 2. Tell me more about what your responsibilities all include. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I serve on a team with um, my 10 other state officers. So there's 11 of us total, and each of us take a specific area of Wisconsin. So I cover a Section 2. So that ranges all the way from here up in Hudson, all the way to back home in Osseo Fairchild. So we cover quite a wide area and I also cover 24 chapters. So it's kind of checking in on them, making sure they're okay. I'll visit every single school and just kind of um, work on those leadership skills with the students and just make sure everybody's included in FFA. Let's go back. You've started your term in June. Yeah. Um, and since then you've had a lot of cool opportunities. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of those memories you've already had. So in June, we like hit the ground running, <laughs> basically started living out of a suitcase from day one. Uh, we did a lot of traveling as a team. We really just kind of focused a lot on like working out together as a team and just kind of developing ourselves. And then we kind of transitioned more into fall working with members. But in the summertime, um, one of my favorite trips we traveled to was Washington, D.C. We got to meet up with state officers from all around the country. So that was an awesome experience. We went down to the Wisconsin State Fair. That was a highlight. So we did lots of traveling during the summer, but it was so fun. Now, Casey, you have been serving since um, 2020, 2021. Yep, 2021. So tell me about what, what's the ride been like? It's been the ride of a lifetime for sure. I started in the June of 2021. So I was served as a vice president last year for section two also. So I covered the same area that Heidi represents this year. And then this June, I got selected to serve as this year's president. And it's been one heck of a year and one I'll never forget. I've made so many new friends and memories and I've continued the relationships with FFA members that I met last year into this year. And I've seen them succeed and grow. And it's just a remarkable experience to say the least. And you're from around this area, Mondovi. Tell me, what's your background involved in agriculture and then FFA? Yeah, so I grew up on my family's first generation beef farm. So my dad actually was an FFA advisor when I was younger, but now he teaches at Chippewa Valley Technical College as a career and business instructor. Yes, so he works with adult farmers, but at a young age, he made sure that me and my siblings were involved in FFA and knew why it was so important and really instilled our love for agriculture. So it was definitely a family tradition to get involved as soon as I could. And I remember going to FFA events before I can barely remember with my dad, and then once my brother and sister got involved, I would tag along with them. So I couldn't wait for the day until I got to wear my own corduroy jacket. And you've had so many real experiences, and that's what's the uniqueness of CTS organizations like FFA, um, providing that real world experience. Tell me maybe about a memory you have back here in the blue corduroy jacket. Yeah, throwing it back to high school, one of my favorite events was leadership development events. And it's actually leadership development event season right now for all the FFA members across the state. And when I was in high school, my favorite event was employment skills. So that's where you do a mock job interview and you apply for a job that would interest you. And I just know that was my favorite, like, but my favorite speaking contest, and I think it helped me a lot for future interviews that I will partake in. Because the Employment Skills Leadership Development event is really you're doing an interview with the judges. Yeah, you're doing an interview, you write a cover letter, you make a resume. So you're doing all the steps and you're getting a real world experience that can't be replaced with anything else. And wherever you go, you need to speak when you're talking to an employer or on your case, you also participated in leadership development events. Tell Did. me more about your experience. Yeah, so one of my favorite ones was called extemporaneous public speaking. So kind of a long word, but basically you go into the room, you're given a topic and you have 30 minutes to prepare a speech about that topic. So I just kind of love the thrill of it and just you kind of go in and you just kind of have to stay up to date on your agriculture facts. Um, you get little cards that you can write on and then you go in front of the judges to present. So that was just one of my favorites and you just kind of like go with the flow, keep on rolling with it. If you mess up, you just got to keep on going. <laughs> but um, I loved it. It really helped me develop my public speaking skills for sure and definitely played a role when I ran for state office, just having those skills from that event just really played into um, what I'm doing now and really for the rest of my life. 
And going back, some of those topics you had to choose, you really had to prepare for about anything. And then as big of an industry agriculture is, it's maybe a little hard to do that. Oh, yes. Uh, we did get to have five resources with us. So I would try to bring agriculture textbooks that range from business to leadership to animal science, plant science. So just cover like a really wide range of agriculture. Uh, but some of my favorite topics were the ones about communication. So I always <laughs> love answering those questions and like giving the speeches on that. Now, you're a college student and you're into communications. Tell me how FFA has really helped you get into college and now some internship opportunities as well. Yeah, definitely. So when I started out in FFA, you know, I really was focused on the livestock side. But I think through serving as a reporter in my chapter um, FFA and just kind of like doing various activities, I kind of realized I was really, really interested in more of the marketing communication side. Um, so when I got to college, I actually ended up switching my major from animal science <laughs> to ag marketing and communications. But but um, just, you know, participating in those roles and I really just got to find what I love to do. So I'm super excited about my future career. And um, even now, you kind of mentioned internships. I'm actually um, taking an internship with Wisconsin Farm Bureau as their communications intern. So, yes, yeah, so we got a lot going on, but it's super <laughs> exciting. And I've been loving what I've been doing so far. A lot of opportunities to get yes. involved in and to learn more about agriculture. And you're also in college. Casey, tell me about what, what you're looking at uh, in the future. Yeah, so I'm currently a junior at the University of Wisconsin River Falls where I'm majoring in ag business while minoring in animal science. And this summer I also have an internship with Compere Financial where I'm going to be working with the crop insurance side. So I'm hoping to get some real world experience within the industry of agriculture business. And then after college, I'm not 100% sure where I want to be located or work out of, but I definitely want to go into the ag business field with something with banking or like a loan officer. So I want to work with farmers for sure. And what's so unique is that you I don't think you ever know where you're going to go, you know, after college, but FFA has really grounded you into some really neat opportunities. Yeah, FFA has shown me that wherever you go, you'll find connections and it'll feel like home eventually. We're on the road <laughs> so many days out of the year and we've seen all, every side of Wisconsin, I think, and almost every side of Wisconsin agriculture we've been exposed to this year. And I always find it interesting. The more you learn, the more you want to learn. So I just think that being exposed has really shown me that like the opportunities are endless. You just have to go find them. And maybe similar thoughts, Heidi? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, one thing Casey mentioned is that we got to see like all aspects of Wisconsin agriculture. When we were um, on our different tours for leadership development events, and we got to, tra sorry, not leadership development events, uh, for fall leadership workshops, uh, we actually got to travel around the entire state, visit every single state officer's hometown, and then we would actually go on different agriculture tours in the area. Uh, so we got to see cranberry bogs, we saw a Wagyu beef farm, a horseradish farm, so really just about everything, everything. It was so fun, and really I took a lot of notes and just got to <laughs> take in all the agriculture has to offer and just see some of those unique Wisconsin industries that you don't get to see every day. And the scope of the organization is that there are over 20,000 Wisconsin FFA members and nationwide over 700,000. So there's really opportunities for a lot of people, a lot of students to grow. Yeah, for sure. the opportunities are endless, whether it's with communications like Heidi or business or leadership. FFA is exposing their members to everything to try to make them successful in the future. We even have a band and choir, too. Yeah. So <laughs> really, there's just about everything. Yeah. There's artwork contests. <laughs> FFA has just felt anything for everybody. And when we say band, choir, any of you were part of it or have a talent? <laughs> I wasn't in the band for FFA, but in high school, in middle school, I played the saxophone at the local high school chapter. So I think <laughs> if I could go back, I would have joined the FFA band. <laughs> Me, too. I I really wish I would have because I always saw the band playing at the state FFA convention. I thought it looks like so much fun, but I just unfortunately just never got a chance to do it. And I was busy doing like some other things here and there. But I'm like, oh, it's one thing I wish I could go back and do. You know, there, you can only regret so much in life. Right. But, and there's, <laughs> true. there's so many opportunities to get involved in, in today's world. But like FFA, there's just so many opportunities. It's kind of hard to choose. But, you know, talking about choices, there are so many things coming up to celebrate even National FFA Week and CTE Month. What are some festivities you all are going to or something that you're really looking forward to? How do you want to go first? Sure. Uh, so the first event that we'll be going to is FFA Day on the Hill. So that's where all FFA members can come down to our capital in Madison, and we get to talk to different legislators about FFA and agriculture and agricultural education. So we're really excited about that. The whole state officer team is traveling down, and then um, we're traveling down on a Sunday night, and then students will kind of get to have a little bit of training about talking to legislators, and then Monday is kind of our day of action. 
Wow, what are you looking forward to for uh, some celebrations happening? Definitely looking forward to FFA week as a whole. Starting on Sunday, like Heidi said, Sunday to Sunday, I'm going to be traveling across <laughs> the state. So I'm going to start down in Madison with Cap like the FFA day on the hill. And then we're going to come, or I'm going to go up to section nine to visit Random Lake. Then I'm going to come back over to section two because we have our national president joining us, Andrew Seibel from Virginia. And we are all so excited to have him. And we're going to start in New Richmond and we're going to get to see the SOAR Center with Miss Savala and see all the amazing amazing things that they do. Then we're going to go to Osseo Fairchild, Heidi's home chapter, and she can share a little bit more about Osseo and their program and then take on the rest of our FFA week from there. Yeah, absolutely. This is super exciting that the national president is visiting my home chapter, which I just never even dreamed that that would be happening. <laughs> um, but super exciting. So Andrew's going to come. He's going to talk to all the FFA members. I think he's doing like a school-wide assembly for just everybody in the school to learn about FFA and like they get to meet the national FFA president, which is awesome. Um, but Osseo has been really on the ball lately. We've been having a lot of opportunities. Um, recently, we had Amelia Hayden. She's our new um, advisor for Osseo Fairchild. So we're super excited to have her. And she's just been doing some great things with the chapter. A lot of great ways to get involved. And Casey, you recently took a trip out to Washington, D.C. What were you up to there? Yeah, so I traveled to Washington, D.C. for less than 24 hours. I was <laughs> gone, but that's okay. I made it back for bowling last night in River Falls. My family couldn't believe it. But <laughs> when I was out in River Fall, or out in Washington, D.C., we went to Microsoft. So we got, me and Mrs. Zimmerman, our executive director, got to meet the president of Microsoft and see all that they're doing to reach out to communities that maybe don't have all the technology advancements that other large, large larger cities have. So we learned that they're trying to expand. And the one quote that really stuck with me from the event is talent is Talent is everywhere, opportunities are not. So they're trying to make sure that opportunities are out there for everybody because everyone's filled with talent, but it's finding that talent and really reaching in and pulling it out of people and seeing what they have to offer. So Microsoft is doing an outstanding job in trying to get 4-H and FFA involved with everything that they have to offer. And one of the coolest things that I learned about was out in North Dakota, they have the Grand Farm. And it's a farm where FFA chapters can go and they can become drone certified, for like flying drones. And it's just the opportunities are endless for those FFA chapters. So just learning about like what we can do around here to try to build our Microsoft connection because it actually started in Appleton and some of their like key leaders are still live in Wisconsin and their families have agriculture backgrounds and are still farming. So that was just super cool to hear about and it was definitely a fun and fast trip. For sure. And when we look at these big companies, they are supporting national FFA and the organization because there are so many ways to get involved, um, you know, helping with scholarships and grants and different ways to get involved in. And that's just the beauty. And there are ways to, um, to get involved financially. Have you um, seen uh, in the students that you've impacted, like, do you see more need for like a grant, a scholarship? Do you promote that? Yeah, definitely. I know that um, national FFA and even our state organization offers some grants um, for students supervise agricultural experiences. I know that, that is a huge one. So those supervised agricultural experiences, or we call them SAEs for short, that's kind of like a project that a student has that involves agriculture and FFA, and it's really student-led. They get to make a lot of the management decisions on that. And some for like, sometimes for a student starting up in FFA, they want to have an SAE, but they just don't have the funding for it. So they can actually fill out one of those grants and then hopefully receive money from the state or the national level, and it really helps them kickstart their program, and it's <laughs> awesome to see that that student achieve in their SAE. And when we look at your SAEs, your involvement in agriculture, what is it? So my supervised agriculture experience or SAE growing up was beef production. So I grew up working on my parents' farm and I definitely learned a lot of hands-on experience from that. And then I also had a smaller um, sheep production. So I, sh I grew up showing sheep at our local county fair. And that was something very interesting because from when I was born, we had beef cattle around, but it wasn't until third grade that we started buying a few market weathers to raise and grow and just learn everything about them. And so that was a very cool experience for me. So I did beef production and sheep production. Wow, a lot of ways to kind of get involved in your side and that side. What about you, Heidi? So mine is also very similar. Um, mine is also <laughs> beef production. Unfortunately, didn't have the sheep, but um, <laughs> I always loved my beef cattle. And, you know, starting out, it, I kind of just helped my parents along with farm work and working with the beef cattle. And then eventually I started out with my one heifer and then just kind of grew and expanded my herd. So uh, my dad has really helped me out a lot. He's taught me a lot about the beef industry and just um, doing different management decisions. So now I even get to make my own decisions on say, you know, like, okay, what am I going to, like, 
feed my animals or like when they're calving or just like all those like little things that go into it. It's just kind of cool that I get to make some of those decisions now and hopefully I'll have my own like big beef herd one day. <laughs> <laughs> wow, a lot of great ways to get involved. We talked a lot about ways to get involved and opportunities available for high school students and college students. But when we reflect upon your own experiences, why did you first join the FFA organization? So I think I became first involved in the FFA organization just because I was so excited to because I saw what it, it offered for my older siblings and their friends when I traveled with them for FFA events when I was younger. So that's why I got involved and it's kind of just a family tradition. But I also, I think I took it farther than I ever thought I would. I When I graduated high school, I ran for state office and I didn't initially get it, which was a bummer at first, but then I went to college and I grew into the person I am today. And then I went back and ran again and I was selected to serve as the vice president last year. And that was like the biggest dream of my life came true. And I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it that I got to serve another year in the corduroy jacket. But serving at the state level is a little bit different because I saw it as an opportunity to give back to the organization that gave me so much during my middle school and high school years. So I'm definitely very thankful that I've had the last two years to kind of give back and see the members throughout their middle school and high school years and just try to be a role model for them and to try to give back to something that gave so much to me. Just a way to give back for yeah. you, Casey. What about you, Heidi? How did you kind of get involved in FFA? Yeah, so actually when I joined, I had no idea what FFA was. <laughs> um, my mom was in FFA when she was in high school, and so she saw that there was an, an announcement to say, hey, um, anybody looking to join FFA, it's like you can come to the ag classroom at this time during lunch. And so she's like, hey, you, you know, you should go to this. And little sixth grade Heidi was like, <laughs> what even is FFA? I'm not going by myself. Like, this is kind of scary. But she's like, come on, you have to do it. So eventually it was like, all right, I'm going to go to this FFA meeting. And as soon as I walked into the doors, um, I just felt so welcome there. And we actually had our previous FFA advisor, Mr. Betcher. He was the, um, there at the time. And he was kind of the, one, the main one who really helped drive my FFA career. He was the one who pushed me to do a lot of those events just to grow myself as a person, my personality, kind of figure out like what I'm interested in. And then I would say about my sophomore year of high school is when I started to really take into consideration state office. Um, I just had so many people around me that influenced me. Um, I joined my chapter officer team, which has also kind of played a big role in it too. And then um, I went to college for a couple years and then I decided I wanted to run because I was so thankful for the opportunities that FFA gave me. So really I just wanted to take those opportunities and um, give them to other students, make sure that they were aware of all that FFA has to offer and just serve this amazing organization that has served me for so many years. Just a lot of ways to get involved. Mm -hmm. Unique to hear your backgrounds, but when we look at the grand scheme of things, it is the Career and Technical Education Month alongside CTSOs. Um, have you all been part of or engaged with um, other organizations like Skills USA, FCCLA? So we actually did not have those other clubs offered at my high school. I wish I would have because I think I would have enjoyed getting involved with them, but FFA was the main um, course offered at Mondovi. Cool. What about you? Yeah, um, at my high school, we didn't really have many of those clubs either, which I know, like hearing about them now, they do sound amazing. It's like, I think I would have definitely gotten involved. But as for other organizations, I say um, we do partner with like Farm Bureau. I know recently we'll be having a Farm Bureau event that FFA members can go to. So it's led by the Farm Bureau organization. And then us as state officers just get to come and hang out with the FFA members and just kind of see two organizations that involve agriculture kind of collabing together to bring members some awesome like agricultural leadership skills. There's a lot of ways to partner and support and just whatever organizations students are part of it, just trying to get that real world experience is really important so then they're prepared whether they go into college or trade school, whatever that may look like. So as we look back into FFA and those organizations, reflecting thoughts um, about to what um, your, your last comments on how FFA can really help provide students the opportunities that are lifelong. So I think FFA just does a remarkable job at teaching everybody that they are welcome and that they're valued in our organization. We have so many opportunities, like Heidi mentioned earlier, the band and choir, the art contest. We have speaking contests or career development events during the spring. So we just have opportunities that I think should spark at least every member's interest in some way. They don't have to do every activity because I know if they're involved in the other clubs, that gets to be a lot. But just if they find one thing that they find their passion for, or they find that they were valued, I think that's important just to make sure that they know that they're welcome in the FFA organization. Absolutely. Thanks, Casey. What about you, Heidi? 
I definitely say, I know that people say this a lot, but honestly, take advantage of those opportunities. Don't be afraid to reach out and say, hey, you know what, I want to do this event or I just want to try this. Because I know coming from me, I was a super shy, very introverted little <laughs> middle schooler. But if it weren't for the people around me kind of like encouraging me and like motivating me, I never would have taken those opportunities. So, you know, if you're somebody out there who thinks, you know, somebody in your life should be an FFA or like take advantage of an opportunity or an event, I would say 100% just try to motivate them to do it. And if you are that person, just go for that opportunity. It doesn't hurt to try. And in FFA, there's a lot of events that you can do that you don't have to be 100% <laughs> like the best at. Just like showing up, participating, you're going to learn so many skills and it will honestly help you for the rest of your life. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on. That was Casey and Heidi. They are serving as Wisconsin FFA state officers and the celebration for February Career and Technical Education Month. Organizations like FFA and many others really give that real world experiences. Thanks for joining in for, to listen to Wisconsin FFA state officers Heidi and Casey as they take along their journey. Their term will end in June of this year. National FFA Week is at the end of this month and the many celebrations will to come. Thanks for tuning in to this segment on the Western Wisconsin Journal on Agriculture. I'm Michelle Stangler.